Hi, I'm Amanda McCoy Flanagan. And I'm Jenny Oliva Smith. Welcome to Soul Rising. On this podcast, you will hear honest, off the cuff, vulnerable conversations about all things love, loss, and connection. Deep and meaningful conversations sure to pull at your heartstrings and enlighten your soul. Again, welcome. It's time to let your soul rise. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Soul Rising. This is uh, season two, episode three. We have the awesome Danielle McCombs and Christy Olinger. They are co-hosts of the podcast, The Opposite of Small Talk. Today, we're going to be talking to Danielle and Christy about their co-hosting experience, their partnering up for their podcast, what sort of inspired that, how it all works out. The wonderful Ginny is not here today. She is working at the moment. So I'm going to speak, speak for both of us. I, I have her permission. So, um, yeah, so we're just going to jump right in. Danielle, do you want to start and introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. I'm Danielle McCombs. I am a life coach and a podcast host. As you had mentioned, I live in San Francisco and I am a native New Yorker, which is how I know the wonderful Amanda McCoy Flanagan. We go back, I think, to nursery school. So yes, yes. Um, two very longtime friends on this, uh, having this conversation with, which is exciting. It's awesome. So I'm very excited to be here and I'll turn it over to Christy. I'm Christy Allinger. I am a development consultant for a bank and I also have a business where I teach workplace communication. And I co-host The Opposite of Small Talk with Danielle. So multi-hyphenate, multi-passionate person. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So yeah, your expertise in communication, you know, I'm sure really just spills over into making you I mean, perfect there's for so much pressure when it comes to communication when you're a communication consultant. And then on top of it, you host a podcast called The Opposite of Small Talk. Yeah. People have a lot of expectations about what the dialogue is going to be. But I, we've got a great great conversational partners here. So I'm sure it will be lovely. Yeah, it seems like both of you are perfect for this. So tell us a little bit about the opposite of small talk. What is what is the mission for your show? So the opposite of small talk is a podcast of meaningful conversations for personal transformation, which is a really broad bucket. But how this all came to be is that Danielle and I just really enjoyed having conversations that were not small talk conversations. And we decided it would be great to do that on a podcast. What are some examples of like not small talk? Like what's big talk? Uh, I would say we have like three buckets, which everything falls into, which are connection, reflection and social justice. And a lot of things can fall into that. And so we're really lucky that we get to talk to amazing people who I am surprised want to talk to us, honestly. Um, it has been really incredible that it has, I would say, I have learned so much and grown personally just from being exposed to different people. And what we hope is that it is giving other people ideas and other conversations to have in their own lives to have big talk conversations and bring these ideas to their friends and family. Yeah. And, and I think philosophically, one of, as I'm sure you know, the hardest thing about starting a podcast is you have these thoughts of like, who are we to be putting mm. these things out there? And we don't know the answers for other people. And so from the start, we were very clear about saying, look, like life's an experiment. And the way to live a life that you love is to pay attention and expose yourself to new ideas and have these conversations and try things out. And so that's sort of the the idea behind the podcast and what's been so great is that it really has transformed both of our lives pretty significantly in a very short period of time. So we're sort of walking the walk, if you will. Yeah, yeah. We feel that we're doing the same thing with our show. We always say like, we're learning with you, we're healing with you, we're growing with you. You know, we never come from uh, some sort of like, we have this thing figured out. Like you said, everything's, we're constantly changing and growing. So yeah, we don't ever want anybody to feel like we're telling you what to do or we have all your answers. Nobody has all the answers. We just I love that you guys are doing this to like help people navigate, right? We're going through really tough times. It's a really tough time to live right now. So the, I really appreciate that you're having those big conversations with, with people. I want to talk a little bit more about those types of conversations. But before we get into that, um, why did you guys feel like you wanted to be partners? What drew you to each other? Out of all the friends, out of all the people, why the two of you choosing each other? Well, I will say, so Christy and I have, we met in college. We were in the same sorority together and have just stayed close since then. 
And I will let Christy tell because she was the one that approached me about this. Mm -hmm. So I will let her tell her story of why me? I don't know. So in 2019, I was starting my business. I had been doing workshops for years and years for fun and for free. And I knew I wanted to start this, this business where I was doing workplace communication workshops. But I didn't have any sort of like social media presence or following. And I was like, I really need to kind of build a presence in the digital world, just sort of understanding how marketing works. And I love podcasts. Like I am an OG podcast listener. I can remember having to transfer podcasts onto my iPod Nano so I could Mm -hmm. go like for a run with them. So I've been listening to podcasts for a long time and my brother has a podcast. So it was really natural and communication. Yeah. It's sort of natural for me to think of doing a podcast, but it was overwhelming to think of doing it myself. Mm -hmm. And I like development more broadly. So while I'm focused on communication in my business, I just love like growth is my highest core value. I love just personal development. And so when I thought about this idea of doing a podcast, I knew I didn't want to go it alone. And Danielle was the obvious choice for a variety of reasons. One, she's much funnier and more fun than I am. So I knew she would bring something to the podcast that I could not bring. I I don't know if I can say, I mean, I guess I could have done it with other people, but she was just the obvious choice. And I think it's because we were having these conversations already. Mm -hmm. So I knew she was interested in these topics. I knew she was open to self-development and those kinds of things. And so I sent her a text and just said, hey, do you want to host a podcast with me? And she texted back and she said, about what? (laughs) And I told her, (laughs) you spelled yes wrong. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and she was like, all right, sure. And, and right. that was really it. Yeah. Awesome. And so I would say that my, you know, introduction into podcasting was not as strategic as Christie's because I just said, OK, you want to do that? And we started it. But mm-hmm. I'm so thankful that she did ask me to do it because it's my favorite thing that I do. I love it. I feel like it has created an incredible network. It is allowed me to grow in a different way and allowed me to like really find this other thing that gives me life it like excites me in a way that I don't know that I would have found on my own so um it really has been a great journey so far yeah we feel very purposeful as well we feel that like out of all the different things that Ginny and I are doing in our lives, probably aside from being parents, we feel that it's just so meaningful and it's just so needed. And you guys have done your work. We've done our work, you know, our personal development stuff, which is always more to go, like I said before. But it just it just lights us up. We're just excited to do it. It's something that I look forward to. Like, I really enjoy out of everything, the writing, the blogging, everything that I do. I really love the podcasting, I think, the most. And I think it could reach the most people, too. I think it's very... It's, it's a good avenue, vehicle for getting our messages out there. So I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I think it makes a lot of sense because both of our shows focus around connection to each other, to ourselves. So to partner up with somebody makes a lot of sense because we're connecting mm-hmm. right away with our co-host. And then we're actually showing our listeners um, what that looks like to, to have a connection, a pure you know, kind, honest connection with another person, right? Just by doing this work together. So I think it just makes, it makes perfect sense. I will say that that is something that has been really great too, is, you know, Christy and I knew each other for 20 years before we started doing this, but our relationship has grown so much in doing this as business partners, but also just our friendship because we connect more on a regular basis. Um, And so we're much more intertwined in our lives than, we probably were before because we were both doing our own thing, busy with our own stuff. So it has really just been a great part of that has been like getting closer to Christy and and she has to talk to me regularly. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, even how we came up with the name of the podcast. Yeah, I, let's hear that. We were having these planning sessions where we were talking about what the podcast was going to be and we were doing all these things. And I've never been a person that enjoys talking on the phone. Because I just, I, I'm not particularly interested in like the minutia of the day to day of like mm-hmm. what people had for lunch. Like small yeah. talk is not very intriguing for me and I yeah. just don't like being on the phone. And so 
it's the opposite of small talk because that's what we want to be having is the more meaningful conversation that really helps you to get connected to another person, get to know them, get to know yourself and and learn new ideas. Yeah. The fact that we're having this show right now and this conversation makes perfect sense. I really wish Ginny was here because our mission for our show is is so is so similar. That's why I'm calling this a power of collaboration. I'm going to call this show mm-hmm. the power of collaboration because when people come together to do such meaningful work, it just puts this really great energy out in, in the world. And when people, when they're listening, when they're watching, they can feel your connection. They could feel mine and Ginny's connection. It maybe inspires them to get closer to somebody else. Ginny and I also got a lot closer since doing our show. We weren't like best friends. Like we were acquaintances at first. And I'm the one, like Christy, it was my idea. I want to start this podcast. Um, Ginny had told me like a while back that she wanted to as like maybe like a year before it was right. Like COVID was wrapping up. It was like the end of if COVID's ever wrapping up, but it was like the, it was like the beginning of like or middle of 2021. And she was like, look what I did last night. She pulled out her phone and played me some like podcast she made on anchor. And she's like, it was so easy. And she was just like babbling nonsense. She's like, I was bored last night and I just started talking and da da da. So then when maybe eight months later, when I really was serious about it, I was like, Hey, do you really want to do that podcast? Like, what do you think? And she was like, oh yeah, definitely. So at that point we were acquaintances and like friends becoming better friends. And then just through the course, we've only been doing this since March, but we've definitely crossed over into another level of vulnerability with each other, with emotional intimacy with each other, just feeling really comfortable with each other. And almost like reading each other's minds, you know, we're on the same wavelength and you guys are too. And you have to be, to be able to have it feel good. Well, so t- tell me about this though. Um, what about the other side of things, like the logistical side of who's going to do what and how, how has that worked out for you all? Has it been easy to determine who does what, how you make decisions though, when you disagree about things? How has that been? She's very easygoing. Ginny is, thank God, because I'm not like, I'm like type A, like I get something in my head and I'm like, it needs to happen and it needs to happen like this, you know? And Ginny's more like, no, sister, like, just chill. Like, it's going to happen the way that it needs to happen. I'm the one with the storyboard bullet points of things that, like, I want to make sure that I hit. And she would just sit down and just shoot the shit, you know? She's just like, yeah, whatever's supposed to come up is going to come up. So we're like, uh, Siskel, what, what's the... the Siskel the, Ebert. Siskel, no, those are the, those are the <laughs> reviewers. We're not the reviewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the odd couple, whatever their name is. So I'm like the type A and she's like the type B. And for some reason it works because and we're so, not like butting heads because right, she's so, not trying to like get her way she kind of just lets me have my way I guess you could say so I would say we're in a similar kind of boat in terms of the things that I care about most Danielle could care less about and probably vice versa there are some times where like I'll have a specific idea about something and she's like yeah no that that's not how it is but for the most part, I think we're in a similar way, and I'm definitely the type A in that relationship. I wonder if that's something that's common in partnerships. Yes, in like general, do people gra- Yeah, do general. people gravitate towards like the person who's the uptight one? You know, sort of ends up getting yeah. care of as someone who's a little more easygoing. Yeah, by nature. well, maybe but- maybe Paula Abdul was right. Opposites attract. I don't know. I mean. <laughs> I, it works for us. It really does. And I also am the one that does the most like work behind the scenes. I'm the editing person. I'm the one that does the scheduling. I kind of do all of that because we also just look into our lives, like who, who has more time and who's busier. Right. And I really, I want to make it easier for her to stay involved because I really think that she, without her, if I had a different partner, if I did it on my own, um, I could do it, but it would lack. There would definitely be some kind of lack without her input and our energetic exchange, like something that goes on between she and I that I might be able to find with somebody else, but I don't really trust that enough. So I try to make it as, um, I guess, conducive to her and, and her schedule and work around things for her because I can. Because the importance, the purpose, the mission of the work that we're doing means more to me then tit for tat, right? Like you need to be doing this if I'm doing this kind of thing. What we learned and didn't know before we started this is that we have very 
different skill sets that are highly compatible. And so similarly, we've actually, we now have someone who produces our podcast, but at the start, I was the only one doing all the technical stuff. But Danielle is really the one that does all of the talent scouting and um, previewing and, you know, figuring out that piece. And I could not do that as well as she does that. There's no doubt in my mind. So it's a different kind of work and each brings its own value and leans into our own skill sets. And so when there was a time where I was getting a little bit resentful because I was doing all of this work Mm -hmm. and it was taking too much of my time, we then had a conversation and I was like, hey, I, I think I'd like to outsource the production. And we agreed to do that. So I think we've had a pretty good scenario. What's your reaction, Danielle, to that? No, I think what it is, too, is it was surprising because we didn't really we kind of dove into this without having a plan of like, you're going to do this and I'm going to do this. And this is how we're going to break it up. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think to what you were just saying, Amanda, like Christy asked me to do this. Right. So when she was like, "Okay, well, I'll figure out how to make it a podcast. I will do the things. And I was like, cool, I'm here and I'm happy to talk. And then once we started talking to people and having guests on, that's where I realized like, oh, this is where I shine. This is what I want to do. I love meeting new people, talking to new people, asking them, like, what are the ideas that you want to share? And being able to bring them on and bring them into the show has really been so fun. Anywhere that I am now, basically, I'm just looking to see who could be our next guest. So mm-hmm. if I'm at a conference or if I'm at a any event or even I'm at a dinner party, right? And somebody is like, oh, I do this. And I'm like, oh, you do? Let's talk mm-hmm. more about that. Mm-hmm. And so it's been that is something I mean, I guess I knew that I would be good at that, but like it wasn't something that I had done before. But it has worked out, I think, that way of like the that we complement each other in a way that we couldn't necessarily have planned for, I guess. I mean, I guess we could have, but we didn't. And it just worked. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And speaking of of guests, how do you source your guests? How do you find your guests? Like you said, they could just come across them. Do they have to fit some kind of like criteria? Not criteria. I mean, that might be too like, formal. See, of a Christy's word. like, so I have a <laughs> checklist that everyone needs to follow. And I'm like, I meet somebody and I'm like, you're cool. Want to be on my podcast? Like a checklist. <laughs> yeah. So that's like, well, Christy, go ahead. What do you? What well, do you- I would just say it's become harder as we've grown because we have a lot of people reaching out to us and we mm-hmm. we do two podcast episodes a month. And mm-hmm. so there are like decisions that we have to make about who are we going to prioritize for this moment and who, you know, who maybe isn't on the list. And that feels very weird um, to make those kinds of decisions. But it's a great problem to have, to have so yeah. many amazing people being willing to speak to us. And it's forced us to be more intentional around, okay, what are the topics that are really important to us that fit in with what we're trying to bring? And I think it's benefited the podcast overall because we've brought more intentionality to the guests. Danielle, what would you say? No, I would still say if I meet somebody and I think their message is cool, I will have them on the podcast. And there are (laughs) certain people, I feel like there's so much, everyone has a story and there's a lot to learn from everyone. And so, yes, there are times that we do have to make decisions of like, yeah, maybe this person doesn't fit for right now, or maybe this isn't what we want to prioritize. But I've just met so many amazing people that I want to continue to get to know them. I want to share their story. I want to put it out there. Mm. Um, And then there's also been people that we've intentionally gone after to have them on our podcast. And that's been kind of wild and wacky and really fun. And we... Like Kamau Bell, right? Yes, exactly. I went after him for a very long time. And Christy was like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I was like, it is going to happen. And we... We interviewed him in May, maybe, Um, Mm -hmm. and it was such a great, amazing full circle moment. I'll tell the story a little bit of how we really got into even talking about social justice because that was not in our original thing that we were going to talk about. We had said this is not a political podcast because Mm -hmm. I can get up and give my political thoughts all the time, and we weren't going to do that. Mm -hmm. But in the wake of the murder of George Floyd, we decided that we did have a platform and we wanted to share this message with this platform, right? What As big or small as our platform was, we felt that we needed to do something. And through that is where we found our friend Kate Schatz, who is a friend of Kamau Bell's. So in the wake of that event, 
Conan O'Brien had a bunch of black actors, comedians on his show and said, like, this is your platform for you to say whatever you want. And he had Kamau Bell on. And basically what his message was, was this is not my time to teach you. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. this is not the time for black people to be teaching white people. And he said, I will give you a coach for your whiteness. My friend, Kate Schatz. She lives in Alameda here in the Bay Area. And on a whim, I literally just reached out to her on Instagram and said, hey, I have this podcast and I would love to talk to you. And she wrote back and said, "Okay." to which then I had to call Christy and say, hey, um, so I did a thing. And (laughs) now we have to have a very real conversation in Mm -hmm. June of 2020. I feel like these conversations, we've had them a lot now, but at that point we had not. And this was the most nervous I was to have any sort of conversation. Christy and I talked about it a lot. I talked to people in my family about it. Like, how do we go out there as two white girls who grew up in the suburbs and be real about what we did and did not know? Yeah. And so we had this amazing conversation with Kate where I think it was really the first time we were real people on the show. Because before that, we were talking about professional development and like we could talk around We were a persona. We were like a persona persona version of ourselves. Yeah. And here was where we had to get really real. Mm -hmm. And so from that moment on, we decided like this is going to be something we talk about regularly. And so we've had a lot of conversations with different activists and different authors. And it's changed the way that I see the world and the way that I show up in the world. And I hope that that has done that for our listeners as well. Mm -hmm. But that started, you know, it it took the podcast in a totally different direction. And I think then even in our episodes where we're talking about professional development, we're much more ourselves because that barrier has been broken down a little bit of where Mm -hmm. we were really Mm -hmm. vulnerable and really honest. From that moment, I was like, okay, so how do we get Kamau Bell on? But never thought that that was really going to happen, to be honest. And Mm -hmm. then I went to Kate and Kamau wrote a book together called Do the Work. And they had a book event in San Francisco and I went. And so I met her in person for the first time and then met him and was like, so I have this podcast. And and he goes, oh, here, go talk to my assistant. And I was like, "Uh, "Okay." And then I just talked to his assistant for a long time. Um, Uh For many Uh months. For many many months. And then be persistent. Yeah. And we ended up getting on his press tour for his documentary that came out called 1000% Me, which is on HBO. I highly recommend it. It's about children growing up as mixed race. And we were on his press tour and we interviewed him after he was on the morning show and that Gail King had interviewed him earlier that day. Wow. So, you know, wow. just That's obvious. Big. I mean, it's the yeah. obvious things that happen is like you talk to Gail King, you talk to Daniel well, and Christine. Just, yeah, exactly. That's just, yeah, a typical work day. That's awesome. So that is so cool that that experience is what I helped you guys to cross over, cross that line of really being true who you are, like really. And I'm sure you were, you were authentic, even within those personas, but you still probably had a little bit of a filter going on. So that just broke down those walls. Right. And that's what it sounds like. You crossed that it line was, into like vulnerability. Vulnerability is really what it was. It was yeah. true vulnerability. And I think since then, Not just in social justice conversations, but conversations about grief and emotion. We both shared very vulnerable things on the podcast, which is why I think it sort of resonates with people. A hundred percent, because there's so many people out there that could just BS all day long and put on the face and say whatever, you know. But when you're getting real and you're coming from the heart, I think people can feel that. And people want that. They just want the real stuff now. They're just sick and tired of the, you know nonsense. I agree. And I think it's also helped me be that way in my own life, too, is because you have this thing out there like and that you have to be it. You right. And so it is like walking the walk in some way. But there is also this part of like we say things because we're having this conversation here and you walk away and you forget that you said them. But it's like out in the world. Right. (laughs) And so there are some things that sometimes I'm like, oh, that's right. I'll listen back to an episode and I'm like, I said that? I was open enough to put that out in the world. It Uh also allows me to, I think, do that in my personal life more. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Like when I was writing my book and the stuff that we share in our podcast, I have the same exact experience where it's like, okay, so I put this out there and I can be myself. I can show up. But can I do that all the time? 
And I like to give myself grace and compassion like when I can't, because sometimes I just can't. But for the most part, I challenge myself to, okay, so now I put these words out there, whether it's written, whether it's spoken, whatever. Now I have to actually show up in that way, like in every area of my life. And that is really probably why we're all drawn to this work, because it's like our spirits, our souls pushing us to evolve. And this is just one way that we get to do that. Super, super cool. So I want to talk a little bit about those social justice conversations that you have. We don't usually get into political things, unfortunately, right? How social justice has to become political when it's just like civil and human. But we don't usually talk about those things on our show. But we felt really strongly um, with the Hamas attack that we needed to talk about the Israeli war. That was kind of the first time that we really ventured into our first episode. We kind of talk about the government a little bit and this and that, but it wasn't really specific. This was really specific and it wasn't being political pundits. We kept it in line with the, the purpose of our show, which is emotion, right? How emotion serves to connect you to yourself and to others. And so we just, we took almost like a, a higher level view, I guess, of it, where we removed ourselves from the who's right, who's wrong, who's saying this, and more of like an energetic kind of way to handle how you can show up the best right now and how you can actually help the cause and the people and the world on more of a high vibrational energy level than getting involved like in the nitty gritty. So how do you guys handle difficult conversations like that? Because I'm sure you've had more than just that one with Kamau Bell. We've had a lot of these conversations. And the way we try to show up is with whoever we're speaking with is allowing them to teach us in some ways, right? And not necessarily teach us. That's not the right way to say that. Is that we're there to represent their story and learn, mm -hmm. believe them, believe mm -hmm. what what is being said um, and and know that everyone has a different experience in this world and that there is something to learn from everyone. And to understand yep. having different experiences leads us to leading different lives and to being open about different things. And so I think that's been the learning curve for me is to just really listen. Yeah, sounds like what you're describing is like humility, staying humble. Mm -hmm saying mm -hmm. we, we don't know as much about this topic as you, the person that's living it or an expert on it or whatever, you have more information to share. So yeah, going in with like an open mind and an open heart. That's what it sounds like. And I think a way to think about it is you're going to lose some listeners when you share yes. a, a real perspective. And they're just people who aren't ready yet. Yeah. So as much as that's disheartening on like an individual level that someone would see that topic and shut it off and say, oh, I'm not going to listen to that podcast any longer. I actually think it's a good thing because it means that we're bringing forward a much more meaningful conversation. Yes. Anyone can talk at a super high level in a really generic way mm -hmm. that's acceptable to the masses. Mm -hmm. I want to be having a much more specific conversation, not meeting people where they are, but bringing them where they need to be. So you're challenging people. It sounds like you're challenging yeah. people. That and comes been... with backlash, right? It's not like we've had a bunch of people reaching out saying yeah. this is awful. Hate mail. I've definitely in my other realm gotten that on TikTok comments Have and things you? like that. But, oh, yes. Like some really crazy comments and reactions to things that I don't think are particularly controversial, but people who are unhappy in their corporate work life Mm -hmm. really like to dump on people who are talking about corporate work life, right? Yeah, how do you handle that, like, emotion? Um, yeah, so I, I think they fall in a couple of different camps. Like, I, honestly, like, I, I feel sorry for them because mm -hmm. I think it comes from a place that, like, they've been triggered by my content based on something that they're going through. Yeah. Yeah. It is hard not to get defensive about mm -hmm. my ideas, but I go back to that thing of, like, my idea is just one way of doing things and it's not the right way. So mm -hmm. they're having this reaction and giving me a bunch of shade in the comments, but it just means it's not right for them or their context or their situation. And that's totally fine. So sometimes I'll spar a little bit in the comments to like try to push them to think, but you're not going to change someone's mind in a comment yeah. section. And so I try to just take it with a grain of salt. And, and ultimately, ironically, the more people like go back and forth with you in the comment section, the further your video is going to go yes. from an algorithm perspective. Yes. Yes. So you kind of learn to love your haters because yeah. they're what drives the video views. 
Yeah, they say all press is good press, even if it's yeah, bad press. Exactly. It's, it's now, good. I did I did have a scenario once, though, maybe a couple of years ago, where I made an unfortunate comment that was very clearly ableist. So I made a comment around, like, you can't claim that you've read a book if you listened to it. I don't even remember what the post was. And it's been, like, sort of scientifically proven that your retention and understanding of material can be the same with listening as with reading. And there's mm -hmm. a community of people who listening to a book is what they need to do based mm -hmm. on like how whatever they learn, how they comprehend. how they learn, whatever their circumstances are. So I got called out in the comments, rightfully so. And I decided to leave it up. I learned something that I didn't know before. And people like as hard as it was to read those comments, they were right. And so I used it as an opportunity to say, yeah, you're right. Like that was really crappy of me. And I made a mistake. And here it is. And I think it's important as people who are out in the public to do that, to show that you can have a conversation about race or ableism and you're not going to get it right every time. Yeah. It's not detrimental. I think we often hold back and are afraid of having conversations because mm -hmm. we're worried we're going to say the wrong thing. I think it's important to know that you can say the wrong thing and survive it. Yeah, and, and also providing that example of how to have a healthy discourse when you don't agree. Somebody else reading that comment might be like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm surprised that she reacted so respectfully and calmly and humbly and all that, where like the typical response, right, would just to be fired, to fire back some kind of... Or to be shamed and yeah. delete it. I desperately wanted to delete it because yes. that was, I felt, it felt so a bad. ton of shame around yeah. it. But. Yeah. I was thinking as you were speaking about how like this whole experience, it sounds like, has pushed you guys into this complete other like realm of being, of your emotional state, your emotional intelligence of picking up on things and owning things. And so it's like the whole spectrum of it feels great and it's exciting and it's purposeful, but you also have to feel the crappy stuff like you just described. Yeah. And I think that's very brave. Now to put yourself Thank out there you. like I'm, that. I'm working on my emotional literacy personally. So it's yeah. nice to hear yeah, that. You mentioned that and I, I remember that from when I was on your show. Yeah. I remember you were entering into some work on your own. Yes. Still a work in progress. Right? Oh, yeah. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? So, yeah. So do you guys think you're going to be doing the podcast like you see it going for a really long time? Like, how, what do you guys what do you guys see in the future? Well, we, we just celebrated our four year anniversary, Yay. which was so fun. Um, yeah. Chris, Christy actually came to San Francisco and we cool. hosted a live podcast where we recorded in front of an audience, which was really, really fun. That's awesome. And so Christy mentioned to me yesterday of what she'd like to do for our fifth anniversary. So I think we've got at least another year coming. It just keeps getting better and we keep getting the network that it has created is my favorite thing is that like people who have their own podcasts that we've been guests on who have been guests on our podcast or people who then they've introduced us to other people. Like, there's this like weird web out there and I don't know yeah. if you're discovering this of like the overlap of people and what I've realized is like we're starting to be in this circle in this orbit of the same people who keep showing up and it makes it feel like oh there's something here right like there's mm. a reason why these people are popping up in different ways and that we're collaborating with other people and so I'm just excited to see like where else that goes and where else that can lead us um and so I'm I'm in I don't know about Christy I, I, I'm in I think one of the things that has kept it fresh and interesting is not just all the interesting people but we've tried to evolve the podcast over time. So Danielle's example of the live recording, that was a new level that we hadn't unlocked yet. And it was so much fun. So I think as long as we continue to do that, and I think we will, I, I can't see any reason why I wouldn't want to keep having these conversations. Oh, I can't wait to find out what you guys are planning for your, your five year. I guess I'll find out in a little less than a year from now. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. And the network of people like you're talking about, Danielle, like that you're like a part of it now. At some point, you kind of cross into this other world, so to speak, of this whole podcasting world and these people that are out there doing very similar things as you. So it's like another sense of belonging, like belonging in like another part of, of your life aside from your coaching business and your communications consulting business and, and all that. So last question I want to ask you guys, how do you bring that, like your work your outside work and how does that cross over into the podcast work? 
I would say, honestly, we learn so much from the different guests we have on and different. I recommend books to my clients. I recommend them like, oh, we did an episode about this and I learned this, like check this out, you know? And so I feel like it's something that's kind of like melded into my work in some way um, where I'm learning these things and I get to share them with my clients in a more personal way and a more one-to-one way to say like, oh, you know, I met this person and this is what they said and this is where this clicked for me and, and get to share that. I also get to interview a lot of other coaches. And so I'm learning from them as we have these conversations. So I will also say like the network of people who are podcasters is really supportive. And that has been really nice because it's not like people aren't in competition with each other. There's millions of podcasts out there. Everybody needs to talk to someone, right? There's all these people that have ideas they want to share. And so being able to say, hey, I would love to speak to so-and-so, and and then they'll make an introduction. And just the the support that's there has been been really nice and really um, fulfilling in a way that I wasn't necessarily expecting. Yeah, it just seems like like a natural fit. Like to just kind of interchange and cross over. And it's also. not as and it's not as prescriptive. We did it backwards, right? We we launched a podcast on a whim almost because we knew we wanted to do this thing. And then now we're both growing these sort of separate businesses and mm-hmm. they do have these interesting overlaps. So it has been really cool to see the connections. But it, <laughs> it's it, if you are looking at it from the outside, it probably looks like super intentional and planned out like the way we did it. Yeah, because it makes sense, both of what you do outside, really. Yeah, but it was just the magic of how the universe works, that it all uh-huh. sort of fits together and aligns. Yeah, like you were being driven without even mm-hmm. like knowing. Yeah. I love that. Things happen, then you can look back. Hindsight's twenty twenty, right? And it could be like, that's why we were mm-hmm. we felt compelled to do this mm-hmm. thing. Because it's just so aligned with your whole soul's purpose, I believe. Well, Well, and I just want to say one more thing in that realm of like connecting podcasters is because that's how you and I reconnected. We probably hadn't spoken since high school, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Amanda reached out saying, hey, I see you have this podcast. I'm thinking of doing that. Like, would you want to talk? And I feel like it reconnected us in a way that has been so nice to get to know each other as adults. Yes. And support one another in the work that we're doing. And so I just, I'm really excited that like that comes full circle as well. Yes. And thank you so much for spending time with me on the phone. We Zoomed and then Chris, you gave me a lot of information of how to get started with the different the podcast, the host and all that kind of stuff. So I really appreciate you guys. You guys really were integral in, in getting me going. Like seeing you doing it, Danielle, it was like, okay, if she's doing this and maybe I can do it too. You know, like we're both from Oceanside. We're kind of cut from the same cloth, something in the water there, you know, like we're all very similar. <laughs> Is there anything else that you guys want to leave with the listeners? Any, how about for maybe somebody out there who's thinking about starting a podcast, you have maybe like one bit of advice or a tidbit for them? I would say just start it. Had we not said, okay, we're going to set this date as the date, right? Like we just picked an arbitrary date. This is the date it is going to come out. I don't know if we would have done it if we hadn't put that pressure on it, because if we waited until we were ready, Mm. it never would have happened. And so 100 plus episodes later, our podcast is very different than the one we did at first. I've gone back and listened to episode one and I find it cringy. I'm like, (laughs) oh, my God, what were we thinking? Like, this is so terrible. But you get better as you do it, but you have to start somewhere. So it's never going to be perfect, but just hit record. Cool. Chris, do you have anything? I agree. Start before yeah. you're ready. That's been a, it's been a theme. And I think it's a good theme for life generally and anything that you want to do. Like perfectionism is a real thing that holds people back. Just start doing the thing and then you will figure it out through that. Yeah. Just jump in. They say the same thing about writing. If you want to write a book, you just sit down and just start writing. You don't know where that part, it's not most likely not going to be your prologue or your first chapter. You got to just get it out there and then it kind of just takes shape. So. Same thing. Yeah. Just kind of trust yourself that if you're being pushed to do something, just do it. Nike, I think, has like the best slogan on the face of the planet. (laughs) Just do it. We need more people to just jump in. So thank you guys for your bravery and your courage for doing the work out there that you're doing and for showing up here to spread some good vibes and some information and the beauty of collaborating together. You guys are a great team. I can feel your connection and uh, you guys are awesome. So Thank you so much for being with us. And thank you, everybody out there listening, watching. Tune in in a couple of weeks. Ginny and I will be back, just the two of us. uh, And then we'll have another guest after that. So 
All right, everybody, have a good day. If this podcast resonates with you and you want to dive deeper, check out my blog, Get Real, all in on love, loss, and connection at amandamccoyflanagan.com. That's McCoy with a K. You can also follow me on Instagram at Amanda McCoy Flan. See you next. Until then, let that soul ride.